The area that would become Argos was inhabited as early as the third millennium BCE, but it was in the seventh century BCE that it officially became a city-state. One of Argos's major pillars was its metallurgical industry. As far back as the eighth century BCE, the city was famed for making products like long dress pins and tripod cauldrons, as well as impeccable body armor. In addition to their technical excellence, the Argives were also creative, as seen in their masterful bronze sculpting, which became prominent in the city during the 6th and 5th century BCE. Bronze is an alloy composed of 90% copper and 10% tin. Because of this, copper and tin needed to be smelted and combined to create the material needed for sculpting. After the bronze alloy was formed, it was melted in special furnaces. They required a tremendous amount of fuel and were usually supplied with charcoal made from specific types of wood. It's possible they were also coated with a protective lining of clay, which would have been sensible given the melting point of bronze is approximately 950 degrees Celsius. Once the bronze was melted and collected, the furnaces were dismantled and dumped. In the 8th century BCE, most small-scale statues were molded using a complicated and lengthy method called solid lost wax casting. From the 7th century BCE onwards, metal workers adopted the more efficient hollow lost wax casting. At its core, this process involved using sculpting models from wax, making molds over these models, then filling the molds with bronze to produce the desired shapes. The process was advantageous because it saved on materials, produced lighter statues, and reduced the chance of possible defects. Once all the pieces of the sculpture were molded, they were welded together and subjected to the cold working process. This process involved repairing the sculpture's flaws by filling any holes and cracks with specifically measured bronze patches. Afterwards, the sculpture was scraped, chiseled, and polished until it was deemed satisfactory. Decorative details like hair, eyebrows, and mustaches were added with the use of a sharp tool. Eyes, which could be inset with ivory, glass, or silver, were attached to their sockets using a resinous kind of glue. Teeth and fingernails were inlaid with silver, and lips and nipples with copper. These small touches added color and contributed to the sculpture's lifelike appearance. Bronze sculptures have a long and varied history in Greece. During the geometric period of 900 to 700 BCE, the sculptures mainly depicted idealized heroes, charioteers, and horses, and most of them were dedicated to sanctuaries. The orientalizing period followed in the 7th century BCE. During this time, Greeks began adopting sculpting techniques from the East, and the depicted statues expanded to include mythological creatures like griffins and sphinxes. The Archaic period saw statues that reflected a better understanding of human anatomy, which eventually culminated in the realistic and powerful human sculptures of the Hellenistic period. Argos was the home of Polykleitos, one of the most famous sculptors in ancient Greece. His works, like the Doriphorus and Diadumenos, as well as his treatise on sculpting called the Canon, had a massive impact on the art as a whole, particularly in regards to ideal body proportions. Sadly, the original versions of Polykleitos' sculptures have been lost, along with most bronze statues from antiquity. As time went on, many bronze statues were melted down to be recycled in things like weapons, ammunition, and even church bells. Because of this, marble copies from the Roman period are our best evidence of the masterpieces of Greek sculpture. <laughs>